Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to deepen our understanding of acids and bases. We're in Unit 4, Section 8 of AP Chemistry. Now, you probably have learned a little bit about acids and bases already. You know some of the basics, that they've been studied for a long time. And if you wanted to talk about acids and bases, we know that acids are known for corroding metals. They eat through things, as you've probably learned already. And they can also be used for cleaning things as well. Uh, of course, I'm not encouraging people to go eating chemicals or anything, but there are some dilute acids that are found in foods, like vinegar and citric acid. If you've ever had those in your mouth, you know that they have kind of a sour taste to them. On the other hand, the bases are generally known for their cleansing properties, like uh, soap is probably one of the most common bases that you're familiar with on a daily basis, or uh, drain cleaner, or window cleaner. Uh, these are bases. They're usually pretty good at cleaning things. Uh, if you have a base and you rub it between your fingers, you'll find that it has a very slippery feel to it. Uh, just like soap, essentially. Soap being a base, it has that slippery feeling as you rub it between your fingers. Now, when we ask chemically, what is an acid? Well, it's basically anything that produces hydrogen ions in a solution. So if you're looking at the chemical formula, the easiest way to recognize an acid is just by looking at its formula and you'll see that it starts with hydrogen. So something like uh, you know any of these here, we have formulas that start with hydrogen and they're all acids. And you probably know some of the names of these like hydrochloric and hydrofluoric and nitric acid. We have carbonic down there, we, we have some others. But those are pretty, common acids. They start with hydrogen. What is a base? Well, a base is anything that produces hydroxide ions in a solution. And likewise, if you're trying to figure out what a base is going to be like, you can look at its formula and it's going to end with a hydroxide. So anything like this, you have sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, all those hydroxides that we've looked at, those are bases. Now, the person who came up with these descriptions was a Swedish chemist named Svante Arrhenius who came up with that well over 100 years ago. So when we think about acids and bases, we can call these Arrhenius acids and Arrhenius bases. Usually, uh, when we look at Arrhenius acids, they're going to dissociate very simply when you add them to water. So that means something like this. You take HCl and it just dissociates, it breaks apart into its component ions. We could say the same thing for perchloric acid. It's going to break apart as well, just into its component ions, H plus and perchlorate. Uh, Arrhenius bases, they do the same thing as well. They just break apart into their component ions. So there we have potassium hydroxide producing those two ions and calcium hydroxide producing its two ions. Now in this case, we have two hydroxides, so that's why there's a, a two right there. Let's take a look at an example problem with Arrhenius bases. Let's imagine that we have a 0 0.70 molar solution of calcium hydroxide that is prepared from solid calcium hydroxide and distilled water. Determine the concentration of hydroxide ions in the solution. Well, it might be useful to have the actual equation here so we can look at that. So there's the equation for the dissociation of calcium hydroxide in aqueous solution. And we know that the concentration of calcium hydroxide is 0 0.70. So we can use simple stoichiometry to look at the mole ratios here. The calcium ion, it's a one to one ratio. So the calcium ion would also be 0 0.70 molar, isn't it? Of course, that's not what the question is asking. It's asking what's the concentration of hydroxide? Well, that is a one to two ratio. So the hydroxide concentration is going to be twice what the other concentrations are. It's 1.40 moles per liter, and that's the answer. Now, if that's all we had to say about acids and bases, well, unit 8 would be very, very simple, wouldn't it? Because that's our acid-base unit, which we'll delve into much more deeply later in this course. But as it turns out, there is a definition that is much more inclusive. Because if you've learned a whole lot about acids and bases, even what we've learned about in this course already, you know that 
a lot of weak bases, even some of the weak acids that we've talked about already, don't really qualify as Arrhenius acids and bases. That Arrhenius definition that we've given, you know, if, it, if, it's, if it's an acid, it starts with H. If it's a base, it ends with hydroxide. That's very limiting. And if we stick to the Arrhenius definition, we're going to exclude a lot, in fact, if not most substances that are actually acids or bases in the real world. So there's another definition that is a whole lot more inclusive, and this is the one that we're going to be focusing on in AP Chemistry. And this is a definition that was first produced by Johann Bronsted and Thomas Lowry. And they basically said that you can't have an acid unless you have a base. And that's an interesting concept. An acid has to react with a base. And when they react with each other, they form another acid and another base. And let's take a look at how that works. Here's a, here's a compound that, if you didn't know much about this compound, you might not know if it were an acid or a base. It, it has H on the front of it, but it also has OH on the end. So for some students that are starting out, it might be confusing. But we find that when you react this with water, it produces two compounds, or I should say two ions, more correctly. It produces the ion H3O+, which is aqueous, and that's called the hydronium ion. We're going to be taking a look at that in much more detail in the acid-base unit, unit 8. And we also have COOH negative aqueous. So if we look at this chemical reaction, we can figure out that there's an acid reacting with a base on the reactant side. And since this is a reversible reaction, the other side has an acid reacting with a base as well. So it goes both ways. Now, according to Bronsted and Lowry, an acid is a proton donor. That's all that an acid is. It's a proton donor. And likewise, a base is a proton acceptor. Now, before we go too far into this, it would be helpful to know that when we say proton, a proton is just an H plus ion. If you know that, that actually makes your life a whole lot simpler. An acid is an H plus donor. A base is an H plus acceptor. So if we go back to that equation and we focus on the left side, can you see what's the donor and what's the acceptor? Well, it looks like the HCOOH compound is the proton donor. We know that because on the other side, it basically has an H that has fallen off the front of it. So we know that this compound has to be the acid. We know that the water is acting as a base. We know that because if we look at the other side, water all of a sudden has another H plus tacked onto it, and it has turned into hydronium. So we have an acid and a base. Now on the other side, since this is a reversible reaction, it can go backwards as well, and we can do the same thing for the other side. And we see that if this reaction were going in reverse, the hydronium ion is the acid. In fact, we call this the conjugate acid since it's going in reverse here. And the COOH negative ion is the conjugate base. So every acid-base reaction is going to have a pair of acids and bases. In fact, if we take this acid, it looks a whole lot like that conjugate base. We call that a conjugate acid-base pair. In fact, they only differ from each other by one proton, by one H+. And the same thing with the water and the hydronium. They look pretty close to each other. They only differ from each other because the conjugate acid has one more H plus than its conjugate base. So we have two conjugate acid-base pairs in every one of these uh, acid-base reactions. So let's take a look at another reaction, and let's try to, to figure out some things about this. Let's take a look at the HCN here, its reaction, and let's first of all label the acid as we have in 1A. So which one is the acid? Well, you can probably figure it out just by looking at it. You can probably see that you know this is an H, so yeah, that's an acid. But if you're not sure, just remember that it's donating 
the H plus to the water. We know that because on the other side of the arrow, an H plus has fallen off. It's not there anymore. Now that means that water is acting as a base, isn't it? An acid always reacts with a base. That's why these are called acid-base reactions, not acid-acid reactions or base-base reactions. Acid-base, the acid reacts with the base. Now on the other side of the arrow, we can figure out conjugate acid and conjugate base because if we go in reverse, we see that this hydronium is donating to the cyanide ion. So the hydronium is the conjugate acid and the cyanide would have to be the conjugate base. And we can identify the two conjugate acid base pairs as well. We have this acid, the HCN, that looks a whole lot like that cyanide ion, doesn't it? That's a conjugate acid base pair. And here's another conjugate acid base pair as well, the water and the hydronium. So the hydronium is the acid and the water is the base in that pair. So for any one of these acid-base reactions, you should be able to isolate all of these things and isolate the two conjugate acid-base pairs that are present. Now, we've looked at two reactions that are acids, but why don't we look at the bases? Like I said, and this is on the, on the screen here officially here, in every conjugate acid-base pair, the acid will always have one more H plus than the base, and we see that's the case here. All right, let's go on and take a look at a base. So here we're going to consider the dissociation of ammonia in water. And its formula, of course, is NH3. So part A says, write the base dissociation equation for ammonia. Works the same way. We know it's going to be in water, so we have to add the H2O. And since this is a base, we know it's going to be accepting the H plus this time. So if it's accepting an H plus, the, uh, one of the products has to be NH4 plus. That's the only way it can be written if it's accepting an H plus. And then what's left? Well, if water is going to be donating the H plus this time and you hack off an H plus from that, all you're left with is hydroxide. I think at some level that kind of makes sense though, that in a base you make hydroxide in an acid, we seemed to be making hydronium, like we did in those last two examples. So here's part A. That's the equation. So let's identify the base. Well, in part B, that's the base, which means that water has to be the acid. And in the other direction here, we can see that this ammonium is donating the H plus to hydroxide if you're going in the opposite direction. So ammonium would be the conjugate acid and hydroxide would have to be the conjugate base. So there we have part B. Now you might notice that in this reaction we have water acting as an acid. In the last reaction, in fact the last two reactions, water was the base. So we have water that can be either an acid or a base depending on the reaction. And that is something called an amphoteric substance. When something can be either an acid or a base, that's called amphoteric. And we'll find a few substances that are amphoteric as we work through the acid-base section later on in Unit 8. Now Part C says point out the two conjugate acid-base pairs. Well, there's the base. Do you see the conjugate acid that looks a whole lot like it? Well, yeah, that would be the ammonium. So there we have a conjugate acid-base pair. And then here's another conjugate acid-base pair. The water paired up with the hydroxide. So as you can see here, this is a, an, an introduction to acid-base chemistry. We're just barely dipping our finger into that because we're going to hit uh, acid-base chemistry fairly heavily in Unit 8. So stay tuned for that. I hope you learned something about Arrhenius acids and bases and Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. If you did, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button and join me in my next video where we're going to be moving on to Unit 4, Section 9, where we're going to be going back to redox reactions and getting a lot of practice with those. I'm Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching my video.